my first lecture, I looked at what is the issue for feminist movements in South Africa in the post apartheid moment. And the issues that I raised were issues that built on a reflection of the gains just prior to the inauguration of the Mandela administration and the transition period and then the feminist and gender struggles that are currently being waged in South Africa. Now one of the issues that I think South African women have gained was through the Women's National Coalition which was led by feminist activists within the ruling party, the ANC women like Prince Gavinder, Trini Kinwala and people who were aligned broadly, women and a feminist activists who were aligned in the women's movement through the anti apartheid uh, struggle both within the country and outside. And the Women's National Coalition brought together uh, uh, women from diverse backgrounds within the South African civil society, so women from religious, cultural, uh, academic, and political spheres to put in place the, the requirements for the negotiation table and one of the key gains was to set in place both a gender quota for the representation of women but at the negotiation tables but also for political parties as they compiled uh, lists for election and I think that was a key point for the, uh, um, making the claim to and giving reality to the representation of women in politics in South Africa. But now that we do have women in government in South Africa, the questions that are raised currently is whether these women do make a difference at the level of government for women on the ground. And what we've seen is the women's movement now diversifying both in terms of a class perspective because what you have is the formation of civil society organizations where women have thrown in their lot with the trade unions. So the formation, for example, of an organization called Sikula Sonke, which is a, a, a trade union for women working on farms and how they engage at the level of global trade to make the claims for economic equality. And then we, we've also seen the progressive professionalizing of the uh, uh, non-governmental organizations with an increased hiring of formally educated women, often very highly skilled, um, and these women then mediating the relationships, for example, between donor funders and ordinary women on the ground. And the class issues and class differences also come into play here. We've also seen the broadening of women's and gender studies in the academy, but one's got to ask what those curricula take on board in terms of the issues that we surface in our curricula in turning out um, gender scholars within the academy and also the gender trainings that we do and oftentimes the, these are piecemeal gender training for professionals in the health sector or for gender focal point uh, directorates um, in government as well as uh, more kind of technocratic managerialist approaches to the representation of gender in governance. Now whilst that is important, the issue becomes also which women are getting left out. Now South Africa has not done well in terms of our um, fulfillment of the Millennium Development Goals in relation to maternal and child mortality, specifically in an in relation to health service delivery in our far-flung rural areas. The other issue for feminists that have become crucial is also the consolidation of customary authority, which is mainly male. And in these areas of governance, we've got to ask, what does that mean, specifically in the current administration where we do have a president 
who has assisted in consolidating the powers of traditional or customary authority in government. And questions that raise that we have to ask is to how do customary authorities now engage with women on the ground and which women find it better or easier or more important to engage with customary authority and which sets of women find it deeply problematic engaging with those institutions. Those are some of the research challenges that we that we also face. The recurrent problems in, around the high levels of gender-based violence in our society and also the levels of homophobic crime specifically targeting gay men, lesbian women have also become very, very crucial in our societies and these are also challenges for feminist scholars and for uh, uh, feminist activists coupled with uh, uh, socioeconomic rights of poor women. Um, at the same time, another challenge, just at the level of taking on board um, gender mainstreaming as a policy, we've got to ask the extent to which gender mainstreaming is entrenched within our structures and processes of government. And in my second lecture, what I did look at was the, the practices of gender mainstreaming within the South African National Department of Health. And I indicated the problems there where gender mainstreaming is often only limited to the equitable hiring of men and women and not asking questions around health outcomes as these are gendered specifically for men and for gay men. Um, because the focus obviously is also on those health outcomes for women such as maternal health um, and uh, obviously HIV AIDS rates which do target women specifically. But in terms of men, the questions around vulnerabilities to HIV AIDS that now are being addressed through the practices of male circumcision um, as well. But those are also issues that need to be taken on board in terms of gender mainstreaming. But the meanings of gender mainstreaming within a feminized sector such as health um, are, I think, poorly understood by those gender focal point people who often have to be the sole responsibility of gender mainstreaming. And so questions such as the value of gender focal point directorates in terms of instantiating gender mainstreaming in our governance processes become key because um, what we find is a ghettoization often of, of those directorates rather than an entrenchment. And, and that is a huge problem, I think, especially in terms of gender mainstreaming. So the, those are the two key areas, I think, that, that I need to indicate in terms of my two lectures. One was, where is the South African um, feminist movement in relation to the struggle for gender equality? And then examining critically, specifically, gender mainstreaming as a practice of attaining gender equality in the health system. Thank you. Thank you.